make up a door panel, well, you need some door panel wood. The one I'm using here is actually pine lining, um, 2.4 meters long, as you can see. And it's a, a big, like it's a big floorboard. It's got a decent thickness to it, tongue and groove fitting, so they'll all join together. And um, what it's got on this side is the paneling. So it's gonna match in and, and look the part. This will need to be stained um, to come to the right color, but the whole spa here needs to be done. So that's fine. So basically, when you've got a panel board like this, A, it's pine, it's very easy to work with. But all we need to do is cut this into lengths, just accurately mark and cut these, and then we can tone groove them and join together, and we'll very quickly make ourselves a board, and we'll put some framing on the back, and be able to sit it into place. So hang tight, and we'll show you how it's done. Okay, so where do we start? Well, we start with measuring tape, and we uh, measure up the hole. See, this hole here, it has some um, boards in place here, and here so the door can sit against it so we can just make a flat panel and um, it's got something to attach to and to screw to to hold in place so we just need to know the height and the width and then we can um, work to those two you get that measurement the height I want is 684 so you lay your tape out and um, you find your 684 mil is going to be about here we just scribe a little mark um, where that is. And then for this job, you are gonna need a square. A square means that you can sit this onto the edge like that and hold it in place. It'll give you a nice straight line across so you can cut. And then what saw you cut? Um, obviously, if you can use a little power saw, that's a whole lot quicker and easier. What I'm actually gonna do up here on the end, um, this end is a little bit of a rough cut. I'm just gonna scribe and score a line and then cut it with the saw because this timber is quite light. Um, I'll see how it comes up with the cut. If it splitters and carries on and goes all rough, then I'll have to cut it with a hand saw. I've got a couple of different hand saws here. Um, the difference, um, this one's newer and sharper, but this guy, you see this um, folded over metal edge on the top? That is, this is a tenon saw, and what it actually does, it holds the saw very straight. Like this one, um, it can flex. You can hold it like that. You see it can flex and bend. Um, so it doesn't stay as straight. And when you're wanting to cut a nice straight line across a board like that, um, a tenon saw with that hard edge on the back really helps to hold it straight. So you can get on your cut line and cut straight across the board. All right, so there's some different types of saw. I'll put links to all these in the description. A tenon saw and a little saw like that and also a, um, a little circular saw. So you can have a look at some of those tools. Measuring table, put a link to all these sorts of um, tools in the description. Okay, so to start with, I'm going to um, do that test cut up here just to see how this saw performs on the um, soft board. Okay, that's a beautiful result. Have a look at that, I've just stopped halfway through. It's actually better than the cut that it came from the hardware store with. So definitely going to be using the um, little cordless, the little Ryobi cordless. Okay, so we're all scribed off here at the 684. Now I find if you try and cut with these saws, following even following the guidelines in the front here, you end up all wobbly. What I'm probably going to do is drop down on the cut line and see if I can't keep it straighter, but we'll, we'll see how we go. So we lift the guard out of the way. Okay, that's come out totally square, totally perfect. Happy with that? So I'll just do that a few more times. Okay, so there we go. We've cut three out of that one board. And you tongue and groove boards, you've got the tongue here and the groove. They just slip together like that. Like we'll glue them when we do the final assembly. And like that. Look at that. It's, it's short, it's only 40 across, I need 60, so I need to go and get another board. I just grabbed one to um, see how it was going to work. And yeah, look at that. I had a bit here. I uh, kind of forgot that I was making a video about making this door up. So these panels, just chopped them all down to the correct height. And, um, and then I just squared them all up at the top, cut a couple of um, beams 
Again, you've got to work out what your worth width is here. Mine was 61 centimeters. So she cut these at 59. So there was just a centimeter each end left over. When I'm trimming this up, that's the tongue and the groove on that edge there. That's the tongue. So I'm actually gonna trim that off because it's just very, very thin. Could quite likely be broken. Trim the tongue off there and then measure across my 61. Scribe a line, which will be outside here, be about there. Trim that off and then she'll fit in. Now, because this is just a temporary door, um, I haven't actually put any nails or screws into these cross beams. I've just used construction adhesive. I'll put a link um, in the description for the glue I used. And then I've used the insulating foam as well, because I want this door insulated. At This door is actually right where two major heating pipes are, um, where there's a bit of heat loss. So I'll put links in the description to the spray on foam and to the glue. Uh, if you're doing this more permanent, you can either screw through from the other side in a nice straight line so it's all visible. So, there you go. Just turning a plank of wood, and that was $10 worth of wood I've made that out of. The um, cross beams were scrap, they don't need to be that thick. There you go, you can make yourself your own replacement spar door. I'm happy with how this has come out. It's had a couple of days to dry. You um, have a look underneath, and uh, it's really, really looking the part. I'm just going to sit that way up, but. Uh, that's going to absolutely fit in and look wonderful. So what I've started doing here is taking the um, tongue and groove off. You can see on the end of each board where the tongue goes right in, that little narrow bit I'm cutting off. And uh, what I did to start with, I just ran down. You can see the shavings there. That's the outside edge. Just ran down with the chisel. It's not particularly sharp. Um, the sharp sort of lost its edge. Sorry, the chisels lost its edge a little bit. Um, it just ran all the way down, um, just vertically down like that, because it wasn't gonna come off in one great big chunk. Uh, and then what I'm doing is just shaving it flat. And the easiest way I've found to do that, just holding this over this way, and then actually scraping the chisel along the surface. And you see on the back here, you have an edge. We're working down to that line where the tongue and groove you See ends. back here, it says a little bit left. It is just a matter of running this along and it just scrapes it up. This chisel's actually a little bit too blunt. You see along here, it's come up nice and flat and um, keep working your way along just like that. Keep working your way along. And uh, so that's gonna come up with a, a nice edge all the way along. So just nice and slow. This is pine and that's just a thin little tongue and groove bit. So take your time. Now, if you find you dig down a little bit there, you see it's dug down a little bit too far there and there. You can't try and do anything from that direction, but you can turn it around and come back from that direction and you'll be able to pull that down to flat in the other direction. Timber always has a grain. And you've got to find out which way it wants to work and which way it wants to go. Um, and just be very careful that you don't go digging great big holes. But as you can see here, that's going to come up with a really good robust edge so that's done now if you have a long a look along there there's a nice edge and um what in actual fact when i was um cutting it flat all the way along here um it was coming up nice on this side but on this side uh there was still a ridge and something very very noticeable so as i was running it along instead of running it along flat i just ran it along an angle and was able to come up with a nice flat edge all the way along now I mentioned how the chisel was blunt which was really good so it wasn't like just cutting in and digging holes but it was too blunt so and what I did I just held it up on the bricks like this just gave it a bit of a rub and a rough brick on that side a bit of a rub and a rough brick on that side and in all seriousness yep it's done it again it went from really quite a dull edge to really quite a sharp edge it's all it took so a little bit of concrete bit of a flat stone or a brick something like that all it took to um, bring it up to a nice sharp edge again so there you go that is done with the tongue and groove now it's a matter of we'll measure out our exactly 61 mark it scribe it on that side run a saw along slap a bit of stain on it and uh, then it's time to oil it but she's ready so to go all that's left now is just to finish it off with a bit of sandpaper and uh, make sure there's no splitters. She's nice and smooth, and uh, she's ready to go. That end. There you go. The door is on, and uh, I have noticed a remarkable difference with this door on. Uh, it is heating a lot quicker. 
Uh, this had a three kilowatt heater. It was heating at two degrees an hour. It's now heating quicker and it's also not losing as much overnight. If you've got a panel missing on your spa, get it back on uh, because this little experiment of getting that hole closed up and the new door on there. Um, you see how good that looks with the new panels. And that's the edge that I finished off with a chisel. Looks really nice down there. I've just drilled a couple of holes and screwed it on. But uh, remarkable difference. Really, really worth getting that hole blocked up.